there are many methods to numerically integrate functions in mathematics. In Julia programming language, there are many packages for numerical integration. One of the packages is quadgk.jl, the other one is fastgaussquadrature.jl. Also, we have traps, romberg, and numerical integration.jl. My main focus is on two packages, fastgaussquadrature and quadgk. But what is the difference between these two packages? QuadGK implements one-dimensional numerical integration, also known as quadrature, in Julia using adaptive Gauss-Cronrod quadrature. The main point here is that QuadGK implements an adaptive method. The fast Gauss quadrature JL package provides non-adaptive Gaussian quadrature variety of built-in weight functions. It's a good choice if you need to go to very high orders of n, that is to integrate rapidly oscillating functions or use weight functions that incorporate some standard singularity in your integrand. QuadGK, on the other hand, keeps the order n of the quadrature rule fixed and improves accuracy by subdividing the integration domain, which can be better if fine resolution is required only in a part of your domain, for example, if your integrand has a sharp peak or singularity somewhere that is not known in advance. By the way, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Note that all of the mentioned quadrature routines assume that you supply your integrand as a function fx that can be evaluated at arbitrary points inside the integration domain. This is ideal because then the integration algorithm can choose points so that the accuracy improves rapidly, often exponentially rapidly, with the number of points. However, if you only have function values supplied at predetermined points, such as on a regular grid, then you should use another, probably a slower converging algorithm in a package such as traps.jl, romberg.jl, or numericalintegration.jl. So now let me show you how to use these packages. Open up the Julia REPL and hit the right square bracket to go into the package mode, and after that type add fast gauss quadrature space quad gk to install these packages in your Julia environment. Now to see the packages have been properly installed, I use the using keyword and the name of the package, using quad gk and using fast gauss quadrature to see whether they are imported properly. Now it's time to show you some actual practical examples. I import the quad gk package, then I call the quad gk function. The quad gk function takes three arguments, in this case, a function that we want to integrate and the interval of integration from a to b, here from 0 to 1. And it returns a tuple, one is integral value and the other one is the error of the integration. By the error, I mean an estimated upper bound error on the truncation error in the computed integral that is due to the finite number of points at which quad gk evaluates the integrand. We can also pass an additional relative tolerance or absolute tolerance to the quad gk function. Quad gk supports improper integrals over infinite and semi-infinite intervals simply by passing plus minus infinity for the endpoints. For example, we can compute the integral of e to the power of minus x on the interval 0 to infinity numerically by calling the quad gk function on 0 to infinity interval and passing the e to the power of minus x. We can do the same thing for the Gaussian integral. We know the answer to the Gaussian integral, which is a square root of pi. We can compute the integral numerically by calling the quad gk function again, but we should note that the error estimate is pessimistic, as is often the case. Internally, quad gk handles infinite limits by the changes of variables. For instance, we can transform the integral from a to infinity to an integral of 0 to 1 by this change of variable and we can transform an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity to the interval minus 1 to 1 by this change of variable. Although the transform integrands are singular at the endpoints t equal to 1 and t equal to plus minus 1 respectively because the singularities are integrable and quad gk never evaluates the integrand exactly at the endpoints, it's able to perform the numerical integration successfully. Often it's a good idea to count the number of times the integrand is evaluated in order to have a sense of how efficiently quad gk is performing the integral. You can do that by using the quad gk count function, which returns the number of times the integrand is evaluated as the last element of the tuple. Of course, it's easy enough by simply incrementing a global counter in your integrand function and printing the process as desired. Here, the quad gk package simplifies the process by providing us the convenience functions quad gk count and quad gk print to automate this task. For instance, over here, the integral of 1 divided by a square root of x is perfectly finite even though the integrand 1 divided by a square root of x blows up at x equals z0. This is an example of an integrable singularity and quad gk can compute this integral. To support the endeavor of making Julia programming tutorials, like this video and subscribe to my channel. The integrand fx can return not just real numbers but also complex numbers.
For example, over here we are calling the quad GK function by passing a complex valued function for integration. For example, we can integrate 1 divided by a square root of x from x equal to minus 1 to x equal to 1 where we tell the square root function to return a complex result for negative arguments. Note that we explicitly put an endpoint at x equal to 0 to tell the quad GK about the singularity at that point. We can also integrate vector valued functions. For example, over here I'm using the function fx equal to the vector of 1 x x square squared and x cubed. You have to note that the error estimate in this case is an approximate bound on the norm of the error as computed by the linear algebra.norm function in Julia. It defaults to the Euclidean L2 norm but you can change this with the norm argument. QuadGK also supports arbitrary precision arithmetic using Julia's big float type to compute integrals to arbitrary accuracy. Be warned that the computational cost increases in this case. For example, we can compute the error function to 50 digits by using the quad GK count and passing the error function from the 0 to 1 interval and passing a relative tolerance. The quad GK package can compute the points x, i and weights w, i of a Gauss Legendre quadrature rule optionally rescaled to an arbitrary interval a, b for you via the Gauss function. For example, the n equal to 5 point rule for integrating from a equal to 1 to b to 3 is computed like this. Note that you have to do the summation w, i times f, x, i manually by using the sum function. Over here I knew the exact answer so I computed the exact answer and compared the two results. Also the Gauss function allows you to compute Gaussian quadrature rules to any desired precision even supporting arbitrary precision arithmetic types such as big float for example. We can compute the same rules as above to about 30 digits. A good quadrature rule is often not enough. You also want to have an estimate of the error for a given fx to decide whether you are happy with your approximate integral or if you want to get a more accurate estimate by increasing n. The most basic way to do this is to evaluate two quadrature rules, one with fewer points n prime, which is less than n, and use their differences as an error estimate. If the error is rapidly converging with n, this is usually a conservative upper bound on the error. The idea of Gauss Quarant-Rod quadrature rule is actually to embed one quadrature inside the under quadrature so the computations you do for for example m prime points in the case m prime is less than n can be used for the m points without being recomputed. This idea gives you a scheme which is slightly less accurate than the gauss Legendre quadrature rule but with the advantage of being able to compute an error estimate. For example, over here we can extend our 5-point Gaussian quadrature rule for integral from 1 to 3 that we have used in the previous examples to an 11-point that is 2 times m plus 1 gauss Cronrod rule. Similar to Gaussian quadrature, you have to notice that all of the gauss Cronrod points lie in the interior of our integration interval and that they are unequally spaced, that is clustered more near the edges. The third return value, that is GW, gives the weights of the embedded 5-point Gaussian quadrature rule which corresponds to the even index points of the 11-point gauss Cronrod rule. Then we do the summation and compute the integral and the error for the integration. Now let's use the fast gauss quadrature package. To be sure that we are computing the integrals correctly using the fast gauss quadrature package, I use the quad gk function from the quad gk package. This way we have a numerical solution that we can compare to our own result using the fast gauss quadrature package. Here we are integrating the cosine function from minus 1 to 1. Note that the fast gauss quadrature package contains functions which return the weights and nodes of the gauss quadrature rules for the interval of minus 1 to 1. For doing integration on an arbitrary interval, you have to do a simple change of variable. Here as the first example, I'm computing the weights and nodes of the gauss Legendre quadrature rule for 100 points. Then I evaluate the integrand which is cosine x and assign it to the variable fx and after that I do the summation on the wi fxi which returns the integration result. Then I compare this integration result with the one I got from the quad gk function. As you can see they are similar. However the quad gk function actually returns a topo which contains also an upper bound error estimate. You can do the same thing for the gauss Lobato and 
pass 100 points to it compute the integral and the same thing for the gauss radau honestly not sure about the pronunciation of this name anyways then again we evaluate the integrand at the nodes and actually do the summation with the weights and compute the integral for the gauss logger i'm integrating from zero to plus infinity and also don't forget to pass the weight function to the quad gk function to get the correct result to actually compare our gauss logger quadrature with here the weight function is the e to the power of minus x then again we evaluate the integrand and do the summation and get the numerical integration result we can do the same thing for the gauss chebyshev with a different weight function then again evaluate the integrand and do the summation for 100 points for the gauss hermit quadrature rule we are actually integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity and we are using a specific weight function we get the nodes and weights for 100 points by calling the gauss hermit function and then evaluate the integrand for function x squared and do the summation the fast gauss quadrature package also provides a function for gauss jacobi quadrature you can study about the gauss jacobi quadrature and do it as an exercise using the fast gauss quadrature package do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to not lose future content on julia programming language as always see you all later